Miriam, did I answer your question? Uh, yeah, you did, and I already did it. Thank you. Hey, Professor. Uh, um, today, uh, I need to go buy a car battery. Is it okay if I watch the recording after class because it's pretty urgent? That's fine. That's, that's fine, Hunter. Uh, I, I would suggest doing it because it's going to review single and double replacement reaction. So I really would suggest doing it. No, but, for sure. Uh, I'm going to watch it when I get back. I just got to go buy it real fast. No, hey, life intercedes. Yeah. So well, I'll, uh, I'm going to watch some things. Minute, right? Hunter, definitely watch it. Definitely do the PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, I got to make sure I load the PowerPoint for the other thing. All righty. Uh, so no, uh, go ahead, Hunter. All right. Well, yeah. So I feel bad. I haven't missed a class yet. What, what do I get? Only two in a semester or something? What? That's no. Uh, don't, don't worry about it. Technically I'm not supposed to let you, uh, submit the lab for this, but don't worry about it. I have, I haven't been really checking attendance versus if you don't attend the lab, you're supposed to not be able to submit the report, but go ahead and do it. I haven't been really being that strict on that. Wait, the single and double, I think I already did the, the report. Uh, if you did it, I didn't, I didn't look at it. Wait, let me see. Go into it. Are you talking about the lab report for a single and double? Uh, yes. Uh, no, I probably haven't. Let me see. I would know if I didn't know. Hold on. Can't remember. Um, yes. Uh, I don't know, Hunter. You're going to have to figure that out for yourself. Yeah, no, I haven't done it yet. And that, that ends on March 15th, right? Uh, yeah, it looks like it. Okay, we're not here next week, so it's two weeks from now. All righty. I would, Hunter, yeah. I would definitely do it. I would, if you do it, that's more practice for the test. That's. But do it before before the test, like today? Yeah, I, w if, I would do it before the test, yeah. All right, well, then I'll have to be tomorrow that, I, that I'll do it. Uh, again, the more practice you get, the better yeah. you're going to get at this. And actually, I was impressed at your, uh, uh, I, I was impressed at the uh, um, improvement in your first attempt to second. I was impressed with that. Yeah, like, I mean, like I said, on the first attempt, I was pretty like zonked out after a while. Okay. All Take right. care, Hunter. All right. I'll be back. All right, I'll watch this right after. All right. Good enough. Right, Good enough. You. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing tonight? I got food. <laughs> you got food. I don't. Oh. Then again, I've got leftover fish. So. Oh, nice. My wife. No, my wife has been threatening me with this leftover fish since Friday. Ew. Yeah, that's what I said too. Not to her face. Immediately, as she turned her back around, yay. But. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, how we doing? Did we did we survive the, the nomenclature? Holy shit, Professor. I think at like question, like you said 70, you just stopped caring. Yeah. I literally speaking, I don't know why he does that. I I the first first semester I was here, I made the suggestion that he did that he does it two attempts. Okay. You have two attempts anyway, right? Yeah. So why not make the first one 60 and then you take the second block as your as your second attempt? I don't know. I don't know. He also wrote the survivor guide. And when I was doing some of the problems, it goes from like zero to 100 real quick. Yeah. I'm like confident. And then I hit a problem and I'm like, what the hell is this? And how do I figure it out? Um. Dr. Musgrave is very good. Yeah. He's, he is, he's very, very good. And uh, I have not, I really haven't heard any complaints. Uh, literally guys, I think he's got a four something 
Rate your professor rate him. People don't complain about him. I'm not what saying that say? the, the work is bad. It's just it goes from like, you're good, you're good, you're good. And then you hit a problem and you're like, I need help. Because, <laughs> I mean, I guess he wants you to get it. So respect for that. But Hey, uh, Professor. Uh, some yes, stuff Terry. Came up. I got to go. Okay, Terry. Make Terry. Terry. Yes, make sure you watch the video. There's some funky things about this lab tonight, okay? Will do. I mean, I thought I was just, I thought I had nothing to do this afternoon. Then I looked at the lab and thought, oh, crap. Oh, and then as it. I get in, then I got into the report and said, oh, I haven't talked about that yet. So definitely. definitely All right, I'll watch the video. Watch the video. Thank you, okay. sir. Okay. Take care. I'll see you later, guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get this started so we can get it out of here, all right? Okay, we got single and double replacement reactions. That's what we're doing here tonight, guys. Now, first thing I need to do is I need to get you to realize the difference between observations and conclusions. When you are making observations, what you are doing is you are using your senses to detect something changing or not. So when you have, you see something look different, you hear something that happens, you feel something get warmer, you start to detect a strange odor in the room, or even if you're tasting something, I literally can be in a room and I can tell you whether there's iodine present because I'm sensitized that much. I start to taste metal. It's chemical, it's what you are perceiving. Those are what observations. If you're detecting it by your senses, that is an observation. A conclusion is basically what you logically resolve based upon your observations. So an observation is not, it is a chemical reaction. That is not an observation. An observation is, I saw bubbling. It wasn't bubbling before, it's bubbling now. That's an observation. Then you can logically conclude, hey, their properties are different. Maybe I have a new chemical. Mm, that would be a chemical reaction. So. You need to distinguish between your observations and your conclusions. In this lab, we're going to use a basic strategy. We're going to look at our reactants. We're going to observe what they look like, what they smell, feel, hear, and well, we're not really so much going to taste them. Then we're going to mix the reactants and we're going to look at what happens. We're going to look at what whether they look differently, whether they smell, feel, or hear differently. And again, not so much taste. If something looks different, if it's a different color, if it's a different texture, if it looks like it's got a different density to it, then it's a different physical property. Something must have changed. If you've developed a new physical property, then you must have changed the chemical. If the physical properties have changed, there's a good, good chance that you've changed the chemical reaction. If nothing changes, then there's probably no observable chemical change. And that's what you have to do. You have to use weasel words. Weasel words are those kind of words that politicians use to say, hey, well, I said this, but... I can get out of what I said later on down the road. I used to use them all the time on the stand. You would use them if you're on the stand testifying, you would say something, uh, this person's hair is consistent with the hair found on the victim. What does that really mean? Yeah, the hairs looked alike. Doesn't mean a whole lot. So that's what you're using sometimes when you're dealing with this stuff. 
it may very well have reacted, but you just didn't see anything. So you say no observable chemical reaction. Okay, first reaction. Jeff, have you ever been dumped by somebody for somebody else? Uh, no, sir. I cannot say that I have. <sighs> Philip. Uh, yeah, I have. You've been, okay. They left you for roadkill, right, Philip? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, they were there. They they were there with you. Then all of a sudden, they see somebody else swagger down the street, and you are down on the side of the road. She's got the bus running over you back and forth, right? Yeah, it wasn't quite that dramatic, but yeah, sure. Okay, there's a new couple that's formed, and you're left crying on the side of the road. That's what happens. Chemicals are no different than society is. You have the Flintstones. You remember the Flintstones. You have Betty who's clubbing with Barney. Betty's out there clubbing with Barney and she sees Fred at the bar. Betty looks over at this short little blonde guy and says, why am I with this chump when I can be with that guy? So what happens is Betty dumps Barney and hooks up with Fred and we have a new compound. We now have the Fred Betty compound and Barney is left crying on the side of the road. First, single replacement reactions. Recognition. You got to recognize it so you know what kind of reaction it is. And once you know what kind of reaction it is, then you can predict the products. The reactants of a single replacement reaction are a metal and an ionic compound. If the reaction proceeds, the neutral metal replaces the cation of the ionic compound and the cation becomes neutral. An example, if I put sil aluminum into a solution with silver nitrate, now, aluminum can't possibly be an anion. So the only thing that it could possibly do is replace the silver. Aluminum can have a plus charge. It cannot have a negative charge. So I get a look between the aluminum and the silver. And if the reaction does proceed, the aluminum is going to kick the silver out and we're going to make aluminum nitrate. And the silver is going to be left as the neutral metal. Is this making sense, guys? So has anybody not had chemical reactions yet? Are we good there? Everybody has had chemical reactions so far. Flying the sky. Okay. Now we have to look. There are reasons that aluminum replaces silver. If aluminum is more active than silver is, it will replace it. If aluminum is not, we will not get a reaction. First rule we have to deal with is the more active element ends up ionic. That means if the reaction proceeds, the neutral metal has displaced the cation the metal becomes ionic. The neutral metal will then be translated into a neutral compound. The cation will then be neutralized to a neutral compound. If that happens, if the neutral metal displaces the cation, the neutral metal is more active than the cation. If the reaction does not proceed, then the cation was not displaced by the neutral metal. If the cation was not displaced, that meant that the cation was more active than the neutral metal because the cation already started out being ionic. You can't make it double ionic. It's either ionic or not. If it's already ionic, it's not going to be made to be more ionic. 
it is just going to stay ionic. The other rule you need to realize is if the forward reaction goes, the reverse reaction will not. Okay. I react sodium with aluminum chloride. I get a reaction that proceeds. I get something that happens that I know this reaction. I observe some change. The reaction proceeded. The Na became Na plus. It became ionic. It is more active than the aluminum. Again, the sodium became Na plus. The sodium became ionic. It is more active than the aluminum. So remember when I said, if the forward reaction goes, the reverse does not. If I take the products of the first reaction and I put the products together, I'm not going to get a reaction. Aluminum can't displace sodium. Sodium began ionic and it stayed ionic. Therefore, it must be more active than aluminum. So sodium more active than aluminum. I put gold metal into a solution of aluminum chloride. I get no reaction. Which is more active, gold or aluminum, Victoria? Uh, aluminum is more reactive. Why? Gold. It's more I don't active. Know. Look, I'm just looking at the sheet that I have here that says oh, that hey, aluminum... Guys, if you have the activity series, I want you to turn it upside down right now. Turn the activity series because you're... The way I'm teaching this, if you're doing that, you're cheating. Okay, sorry. Okay, Victoria. Yes. Which one is begins ionic? Aluminum. So if it began ionic. Yes. And there was no reaction, did it stay ionic? Yes. So which one ended up being ionic, aluminum or, sil or gold? Aluminum. So that is your reasoning why aluminum is more active than gold. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still not getting it. Monica, did I just have a head explode? I just, I'm just having a really hard time with this. Okay. You're I'm having just... a hard time with single replacement reactions? Yeah, because, so I was trying to understand why it started out ionic. Um... Monica, this is what we're putting together, okay? I'm doing an experiment to decide whether gold or aluminum is more active, okay? In order to do that experiment, I have to put a neutral metal in with the other metal being an ionic salt. Okay? Do you decide that gold is the neutral because it's, it's standalone? No. no, no. What I'm doing in tonight's experiment, Monica, I am literally just, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what the answer is. So I'm taking gold metal and I'm taking aluminum chloride, dissolving mm -hmm. the aluminum chloride in water. And then mm -hmm. I'm taking that gold metal, putting it in this solution of aluminum chloride. And okay. I'm looking to see if anything happens. Okay. If I don't get anything happening, that means I have no reaction. Okay, Monica. So here's a question. So for like, if if we were not doing the experiment, if this was just lecture, because I'm being asked the same questions in lecture, and I have to be able to determine all this stuff, you know. Okay, what we're doing tonight is the reverse of what we're doing in lecture. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay, in lecture, Monica. In lecture, you would look at your activity series. Do you have your acti go ahead, turn your activity series over. Is this is this it? Is this what you're talking about? Thing in the bottom. Look in the bottom. Don't you have a whole series of metals with a yeah. 
Greater sign, that is your activity series. With your greater sign? I mean, I see like acid bromide carbon. Is that what you're talking about? No, no, I'm talking. There should be. Maybe I'm missing something. Okay. Page 17, right? I mean, I might just have somebody send it to me because I don't I don't know if, if I have the same thing. Okay. I'm wrong. Monica, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Okay, let me see if I can find it. What did you call it again? It's the activity series. Okay. Sorry, guys. It's in your lab under there, but it's not in. Okay. Victoria, do you have that activity series? Yeah, um, well, I got it from the practice test that he gave us, but I do think that it is in your survivor guide if you have that. Um... So I'm trying to find. Okay. It. I think. I know, I know it's in there because I've seen it somewhere before. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry to. Ah, uh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, uh, Monica. Mm -hmm. All right. You have two places. One of which is the lab itself. If you print out the lab itself, there is a solubility chart in there, and underneath the solubility chart is the activity series. If you have the survivor guide, I want you to look at page 14. Okay. All right. You have about third line from the bottom. I see the solubility table and then page 14 of module six of module six. Thank you very much. Um, what about in the, um, in the, the lab report, the lab? Monica, um, Monica, do you have your survivor guide with you? No, I don't have that. I just have a regular survival guide, but not for this. I'm talking about the regular survivor guide. Mm. Look at page, module 16, page 14. No, mine looks different. It's not the same thing. Mine looks... Okay. Mine. Do you see part five? No. I, I swear I have something different. Mine is just... Show me the, page, show me the cover. Um, I think this is just for lecture. And then I usually just print out the, the labs. I, I put the, I put the series in the chat window. Thank you. Okay. Thank Please, you. No problem. In any case, Monica, you, do you see the greater than series? Thank you very much, Jeff. Is that it? It's, it's the, uh, it's the elements in order from most to least reactive. So starting on the left, you've got lithium, which is the most reactive, and then it ends at uh, gold, which is the least reactive. So I got a YouTube. Yeah, I guess I made one from YouTube that I found where the girl goes from, you know, bottom up, top to bottom. I mean, it's essentially the same thing. So I kind of just wrote it out, made my own. <laughs> I uh, guess that'll work. Okay, Monica, what you're doing in lecture. All right, what I want you to say, if you have... I want you right now to look at gold and look at aluminum. Okay. On your on your activity series. Okay. Now, now I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. So, so I guess if you go from um, which gold is, up, which is more active, gold or aluminum? Look at your series. I mean, gold is at the bottom, and then you would go up to aluminum. So. So then. It, the, the ones that are more to the top are more reactive. Okay. So then in this case, it would be aluminum. Aluminum is more reactive than gold. So now what happens in lecture, you would be given gold metal plus aluminum. And you would just be given this. Now, since aluminum is over, is above gold from your activity series, Mm -hmm. then you would conclude that aluminum has to end up ionic, correct? Okay, 
Okay. So, does it start ionic? I don't know. I'm telling you, I'm not having this. <laughs> Monica, Monica, all right. I'm telling you right now, if you're not, if you're going to give up on me, then you're going to lose, you're going to lose a third of your test coming up. I know right? that's why I'm so worried and stressed and out because I've done good on everything give, else. Not to give up. Do you know yeah. what an ionic compound is? Yeah, it, I mean, typically it would have a charge, right? What do they consist of, Monica? What type of ionic? It consists of ions, right? Yeah, so, so you yeah, have a positive a cation one. Ion or an anion. Right, okay. Now, looking at these two compounds, mm -hmm. which metal is existing in the ionic compound? I mean, you can determine, like, Aluminum, right? We know that that's a okay. type one cation. But then gold is in the transition metal. So, I mean, I guess it would, if you, if they were Monica, together. Monica, you're not paying attention here. Okay. okay. Now mm -hmm. I'm talking about these two things. I have gold plus aluminum chloride. Now okay. just to answer the simple question. Of these two things, which metal is in the ionic compound? Between the gold and the aluminum? Yes. Oh, then it would be the aluminum. Okay, that's all I'm asking, okay? okay. So you're comparing aluminum with gold. Okay. You said already that aluminum is more reactive than gold. And it started as ionic. So is it going to end ionic? Yes, it will. So is anything going to happen here? No. That's all they're asking you to do, Monica. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I feel that's like this all, is the first time I'm starting to piece this that's puzzle all together. There. And guys, I'm sorry for that little tangent, but I really <laughs> wanted her to get, get to know this. Okay. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Now we have sodium reacting with gold. Does, okay, Philip, you with me, Philip? We're getting back onto lab sets. Activity series turn upside down. I'm telling you, you're looking at this reaction. Sodium reacting with gold chloride, and I get a reaction. Something in there changes, that I'm able to see this. In actuality, what happens when I'm looking at this, I get a gold solid. A gold looking solid starts to form. So I know the reaction proceeds. Now, Philip, which metal is more active? Um, the, the gold chloride. Or the... All right, Philip, we're looking for a metal. So the answer is either going to be gold or sodium. Okay. Oh, gold, gold. Which one ended up ionic? If I tell you the reaction proceeds, that means that the products were formed. Okay, guy. Okay, Philip. Yeah. So if the products were formed, which one ended up ionic, sodium or gold? Which sodium? one's in the which one's in the ion? Which one of those two is in the ionic compound? Gold, right? Or I don't, I don't know. I'm getting, I'm confused now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry for, for pushing you, Philip. No, no, it's okay. All right. I have my products or NaCl plus Au, right? Yeah. Of the two metals, Na or Au, which one is in the ionic compound? Au. Is there anything with Au, Philip? Chloride. It's the, okay, Philip. Oh, oh, in the, in the product. Oh, the sodium, reaction. sodium chloride. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I when got I'm, you. When I'm going over here to the right, I'm telling you that the reaction proceeds. So products were formed. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So if I created sodium chloride, which one ended up ionic? Sodium, sodium or sodium. 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 Ionic. So which one is more active, sodium or AU? Sodium. Geez, guys, I didn't think this was going to be that hard. <sighs> okay, let me get another victim. Faith. Hi. Hi, Faith. Hi. Okay, now I mix iron with aluminum chloride. I get no reaction. Mm -hmm. That means I did not form products. Mm -hmm. So which one between aluminum and iron started off and ended up ionic? Um, aluminum? Aluminum. <laughs> guys, what? it's not even a question, guys. Aluminum is with the chlorine. So the aluminum has to be ionic. I got no reaction. So that means that the aluminum stayed ionic. If aluminum ended up ionic, Faith, which one is more active, aluminum or iron? Um, aluminum? I want you to say that again, but I want you to say it. Puff out your chest when you say it. Aluminum. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, th I got to thank Terry for that. <laughs> oh, not up there. So we're agreeing that aluminum is more active than iron. Okay. Now I mix iron with gold chloride and I get this solid gold, beautiful gold flakes of crystal, crystals coming down. So I know that a reaction has proceeded. I didn't have the gold crystals before. Now I do. The reaction proceeded. Katie. Katie. Miriam. I'm here. Hi, Miriam. Hi. I mixed iron metal with a solution of gold chloride. When I did that, I didn't have gold before, but now I have gold flakes. The reaction proceeded. Okay. Mm -hmm. What ended up ionic? The CO3. Okay. It's a choice between iron and. Okay. I think iron, iron. Is it in the ionic compound? Yes. It's in the ionic compound that's in the products and the reaction proceeded. So iron ended up ionic. Yes. If iron ended up ionic, what is more active, iron or gold? Gold. First rule. The more active element ends up ionic. Okay. okay. So iron. I think that's the last one. All right. So I have all this information, guys. Write these down. Put them on a piece of paper. The first reaction told me that sodium was more active than aluminum. Second reaction said aluminum more active than gold. Third reaction, sodium more active than gold. Fourth, aluminum more active than iron. And the fifth, iron is more active than gold is. Sophia, you got all that information down. 
Sophia? Okay, guys. Roll time. If you don't answer, you're not here. Keith. Can you hear me? Yep. Davila. Here. Hi. Monica, I'm still seeing. Terry, I know. Sophia. Here. Apple Grace. Here. Hunter, I know. Le Leandre. Here. Maverick. Tyler. Aya. Jeff. Here. Yeah, I saw you, Jeff. Grace. Here. Katie. Here. Mateo. Yeah, here. Faith is here. Jennifer. Here. Victoria is here. Michael is here. Philip is here. Miriam is here. Is Miriam here? I'm here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you do not get to sneak off and not answer questions, ladies and gentlemen. We have to get this through. Now, Sophia, you're out there. Yes, sir. Okay. So sodium is more active than gold. Aluminum is more active than iron. Iron is more active than gold. Sodium is more active than aluminum, and aluminum is more active than gold. Can you tell me from that information, which of those four metals, iron, aluminum, gold, or sodium, which one is the most active? One second. Um, sodium. Okay. I will agree with that. Okay, Jeff, which one is the second most active? Aluminum. I will agree with that. Okay, uh, Grace, between iron and gold, which one is more active? Grace. Is it iron? Okay, the way you did that, you knew sodium was more active than aluminum and aluminum was more active than iron. So by process of elimination, sodium is also more active than iron. Iron is more active than gold, so you know sodium is the most active of all. Then you know aluminum is more active than iron, and iron is more active than gold. Aluminum is second. Third, you know directly that iron is more active than gold, so that's one of the ways that you can do this activity series. So given that information, should the following reaction proceed? No. <laughs> Whenever there's gold in the equation, it's just no, <laughs> straight no. up no. <laughs> the least reactive, no, nothing. Still no. Hey, you know that sodium's the most reactive, so it's already ionic. Sodium's not going to be pushed out of that form. By the way, that is also why one of the reasons why you use gold as jewelry. It doesn't react with anything. So the only one that would beat out sodium is lithium then, right? Uh, actually, you weren't supposed to be looking at your activity series. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't have it in front of me, Victoria. I'm, I believe you're correct. 
There is a reason why that activity series exists in that form, okay? There is a reason, but you're not gonna get into the reason until you get into electrochemistry in Chem 2. But there is a perfectly good reason. Now, you have two metals, tin and calcium. Victoria. Yes. How are you gonna determine which one is more active? Without looking at my paper? Without looking at your paper. Um, I just Actually, know, I, I, let's say, I just know that calcium is more reactive than tin. But how would you prove it? Uh, what are we doing here? In each one of these experiments, what are we doing? We're doing a single replacement reaction. But what does that involve? So do a single replacement reaction for me. So you got SN. Plus? Plus calcium. What form calcium? I don't know. There's nothing that that's attached you, to it. Could you do calcium chloride? Is that one? Absolutely. Because what you want is you want a neutral metal with a... I, I, an ionic compound. You want a neutral metal okay. with a salt. I do this. Uh, I do this reaction. So it would be. And it proceeds. What is more active, the calcium or the tin? Calcium. Do you, do you, am I not supposed to answer anymore? Do you want me to just? No. <laughs> if this proceeds, if the reaction proceeds, Victoria, mm -hmm. what products do you make? You get uh, SNCl2 plus calcium. Or C, no, uh, yeah, Cl2, sorry. Not, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, no, that was you, my bad. I right. got me confused. All right, now, Victoria. The reaction proceeded. What ended up ionic? The tin. So what is more active? The calcium. The tin. Don't. Sorry, the tin. The tin is more active. If reaction proceeds, If reaction does not go, then it's the calcium. Guys, I need you to understand this. What you're doing, to t if you have two metals, to determine which one is more active, take one of the metals being neutral, Make the other one a salt. If the reaction goes, then the, me the neutral metal is more active than the cation. If the reaction does not go, then the cation is more active than the neutral metal. How do I check this? How do I check to see that if I'm right? I guess you would see, like you would have to observe the reaction itself as it was happening. How do I know that there wasn't something possibly in the test tube? You looked with your eyes. You looked at you looked at <laughs> How would you make doubly sure? Doubly sure. What happens if I do this? You're going to end up with the opposite reaction of the first one. 
If the first reaction proceeded, the second reaction should not go. If the first reaction did not go, then the second reaction should go. Does that make sense to you all? Okay, I can see that. So, quick question. Let's say that instead of... Um, are you instead, looking at your activity series again? Well, yeah, yes, I am, because I, I want to make sure that I get, so let's say instead of tin, we did uh, sodium for the, for the top one. Is it because sodium is more reactive than calcium, it would not proceed? Wait, wait, what are we talking about? So let's say you substituted tin for, for, uh, for sodium. Right, right. What it, I substituted sodium for tin? Yeah, like let's okay. say this this was sodium instead of tin. I'm would a mind not, reader as well. <laughs> uh, would it not proceed because it's uh, sodium is more reactive than okay. calcium? All right, Victor Victoria, you're sitting here with that activity series in your in your hand. Okay? Right. Turn it upside down. Okay. I don't want you to prejudge things. What you would do is you would take sodium metal put it into a solution that contains calcium chloride. Then you would observe whether something happens or not. If you observe something happening, the reaction went. If the reaction went, then you would have NaCl plus calcium. The reaction would have proceeded and the sodium would be more active than the calcium. If I did this and I got no reaction, then the calcium stayed ionic. If the calcium stayed ionic, that meant it ended up being ionic and the calcium was more active than the sodium. Okay, I'm, I'm starting to understand. I think We're it's... We're trying to get you to think this backwards as to how you've been exposed to it so far. Okay. Second reaction. Uh, has anybody ever been, or uh, been, I'm sorry, excuse me. Has anybody ever heard of a key party? Jeff? Yes, sir. You've heard of a key party? Uh, oh, uh, no, I was just responding to my name, um, but uh, I can't say that I have. Okay. Anybody, anybody out there know what a key party yes. is? Do you want someone from your lecture to answer no. that? Okay, never mind. You said like a tea party, like tea? Key as in key. Oh. As in car keys. Ooh. Basically, that is what a key party is. You get couples coming into a house. All the men throw their keys into this big jar and the women get blindfolded and they reach in. Whichever set of keys the woman grabs, she goes with that husband. What so, the hell? Oh, so it's like a swinging party. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Uh, the man in the first couple hooks up with the woman in the second. The man in the second couple hooks up with the woman in the first. Two brand new couples are formed. If we're thinking of the Flintstones, Fred and Wilma meet up with Barney and Betty. They switch off. We start off with Barney, Betty, and Fred, Wilma, and we end up with Fred, Betty, and Barney, Wilma. Again, chemicals are no different from the world. Chemicals like to swing too. Okay, second reaction, double replacement. You recognize it. The reactants are two ionic compounds. If the reaction proceeds, the cation from the first compound hooks up with the anion of the second. The cation of the second hooks up with the anion of the first. For an example, if we have barium chloride and we have silver nitrate, if the reaction goes, the barium is going to hook up with the nitrate to make barium nitrate. The silver is going to hook up with the chlorine to make silver chloride. So 
How do you know a reaction proceeds in a double replacement reaction? One of the types of double replacement reactions are called precipitation reactions. What happens is you mix two chemicals together and you get a solid forming. In other words, one of the two products is a solid. It has different physical properties than what you started with. The physical property being solubility in water. The new compound doesn't dissolve in water. The old ones did. So you did have a chemical reaction. In double replacement, there are other things that could happen. You can mix one solution with the other, you get a bright color change, or you can mix them, you get a gas forming, but you gotta see something physically different. Now, we gotta talk about ionic equations. When we are dealing with ionic equations, if a compound is soluble in water, that means it exists as ions in water and is designated an AQ in parentheses. The ions separate into a positive cation and a negative anion. To describe the ions, you need four things. The number, the elemental symbol, the charge on that ion, and you need to say aqueous. So if I'm going to split up, if I have in a chemical equation four Na2SO4s, what I have to do to get the number, I have to multiply the coefficient times the subscript. So if I have four times two, that means I have eight sodiums. I know that sulfate is a minus two, so that has to be balanced with the positive two charge but that's spread amongst two sodiums. So each sodium is a plus one. So I have eight Na, one plus, it is aqueous. Second ion, the cation, four, there are no parentheses. So the SO4 has to be, have a subscript of one. Four times one, there are four SO4s. SO4 by definition has a two minus charge. Again, it is aqueous. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care so much about it, but there are chemistry professors that do. When you're viewing the charge, put the number and then the sign. I'm not gonna burn you for it. Somebody else may. All right, if we have an ionic equation, we list all the ions in the chemical equation. If a compound is designated parentheses S, it is a solid and it stays together. Okay, Matteo, you out there, Matteo? Yes. Okay, we're gonna look at the barium chloride. Okay. What is the subscript on the barium? Uh, there's a three. No. Nope. That's zero. That's the charge. That's the coefficient. Yeah. Three is zero. the coefficient. What is the subscript? Uh, just one. One. So, multiply the coefficient times the subscript. Three. Okay. What is the symbol for the first element? Mm, the symbol for the first element? Uh, it's what's there, Mateo. What's the symbol? Yes. Uh, BA. Barium. BA. 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 What's right. the charge on that barium? Uh, it would be positive. Positive. Yeah. How many? Three. No. Or just one. Split the difference, Mateo. Oh, okay. Let me get it. Mateo. Uh, periodic table, I need a... All right, yeah, the periodic table would help you. Guys, right right you should have the periodic table out, the solubility chart out. No, but... 
Okay. Uh, uh, Claudine, it would be negative two. Nope, not a negative. No, I mean uh, three to trap uh, negative two would be positive one. No. Nope. I don't know. Not Mateo. Okay, there are two ways you can figure this out. Do you know what the charge on chlorine is? Uh, mm, negative one. How many of them do you have, Mateo? Two. So you have a negative two that's contributed by the anion. In order for BaCl2 to be neutral, that negative two has to be balanced by a positive two. So that's the charge, Mateo. Okay. You have three Ba2 plus aqueous. Okay? okay. Now, how many chlorides do you have? How many chlorides do you have? Uh, six. Six? The symbol? Uh, symbol? Yeah, the, uh, the elemental symbol for chloride. Cl. Cl. What did we say that charge was? Well, uh, uh, negative six. Nope, that's, nope. No, I don't know. Somebody help them. Negative one. Negative one, okay. okay. So we have six CL, one minus aqueous. Again, make sure you put the aqueous in there. Katie. Yeah. Okay, Katie, we're going to work on this next compound. How many NIs do I have? Two. I have two NIs. Now, NI is a type two. So we mm -hmm. got to figure out what its charge is. Do you know what the charge on SO4 is? I want to say negative, hold on, negative two. Negative or two, two negative. How many of them are there, Katie? Three. So the total negative charge is minus six. That balances with how many positives? Six. Six. But that positive negative. six is distributed amongst how many nickels? Two, so it's plus three. Plus three. So I got two Ni three plus aqueous. We good? Yes. How many SO4s do I have? Three. Three. SO4, you already said was a two minus aqueous. We good, mm -hmm. Katie? Yes. Okay. Somebody else. Gaith, you out there, Gaith. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Gaith. Yes. I have two NiCl3s. How many Ni's do I have? Two. Two of them. What's the charge, Gaith? Plus three. Plus three. Two Ni3 plus aqueous. How many chlorides do I have? Are well, you still asking me, right? I'm still asking you. Six. Six. Cl, what's the charge in each chlorine? Negative one. Six Cl minus one aqueous. Find this guy. Apple Grace. Yes. We have three BASO4 solids. Do we split it up? Yeah. What's the solid mean, Apple Grace? I'm sorry? What does the solid say? Read the first line. Oh, uh, yeah, this stays together. It stays together. So that 3BASO4 solid does not get split because it is a solid. Now, uh, it's fine. Mariam. Yes. Mariam, do you know, do you look, can you see this equation? Yeah. What I'm highlighting right now are the Reactants, what I'm highlighting now are the products. 
Okay. Now, is there anything on the reactant side that is the same as anything on the on the uh, product side? Um, the two nitrates. Not two nitrates, nickels. Nickels, sorry. Two nickel plus threes. So yeah. I can cancel them. Is there anything else I can cancel? Uh, the six chlorines. Okay, I go ahead. I cancel those out. And whatever is left is my net ionic equation. So my net ionic equation is 3Ba2 plus aqueous plus three SO4 two minus aqueouses yielding three BA SO4 solids. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna try another one of these. Jennifer. Yes. Two AL solids. Is that going to change? No. So it gets put down as two AL solids. How about the FeSO4? Is that going to change? Yes. Okay. How many FeS do I have? Three. Three FeS. If SO4 is a two minus, what's the charge on the Fe? Two plus. Three Fe two plus aqueouses. How many SO fours, Jennifer? Uh, just one. Oh no. Uh, three. Yeah, three. Mm -hmm. Three SO four mm -hmm. two minus aqueous. That yields. <clears throat> uh, Monica. Yes. Okay, Monica. How many ALs do I have? First of all, this is aqueous. Does it split up? Yes. Okay. So how many ALs do I have? Two. Two? What's the charge? Mm, is it three plus? Three plus. Okay. If you didn't know it, you could multiply the three by minus two of the SO4s to get a minus six. That yields, that is equal to a positive six that's spread that's between two ALs. So that's two AL, three plus aqueous. How many SO4s do we have? Three. Three, subscript three. Coefficient one times a subscript three. I get three SO4, two minuses. Do I split up the FEs? How can I, I split up? How can I split them up? All right, I now mean, Monica. Uh -huh. Is there anything the same on left and right of the right of this equation? Under the uh, yeah, the three SO fours. So we can get rid of them. So our net ionic equation for this is two AL solids plus three Fe two pluses, yielding two AL three pluses plus three Fe solids. Can I ask something else? Can I like to prolong everybody's say I'm so sorry. Um, there was this other step I saw on YouTube. So do I need to like, she was like counting how I many I, of you had of each. Monica, I can't see the paper. You're throwing, you're putting something up. There. Okay. I can't read, I can't read what it's saying. Basically she would like split it into like what type you had and then how many of each you had and then trying to kind of like balance it in that way. Are you, are, you like, trying, are you trying to balance the chemical? Yeah, like making sure that you had the same amount of each, you know, on each side. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Well, you do that, Monica. You do that by making sure first that your equation up here is balanced. Okay, right. All right. The charges you're talking about, right? Not the charges. You, okay. When I'm doing this, what I do is I tell my tell my students, 
What I want you to do is I want you to predict the products, okay? I know because this is a metal with an ionic compound, I know this is a single replacement reaction. I know in single replacement reactions, the cation will replace, the metal will replace the cation. So the aluminum hooks up with the sulfate. So I get aluminum SO4. The cation then becomes neutralized. Does that make sense to you so far, Monica? Yeah, yeah. All right, now, what I have now is I have a neutral metal, which is always going to be, have to be balanced. And I have the compound. I have to balance the compound with subscripts before I can do a balancing of the chemical equation. Okay. Aluminum has a plus three. SO4 has a two minus, okay? So I can do one of two things. If I know that the aluminum has a plus three, I can do the cross thing where this plus three gets down and I make, I make the positive three from the charge of the cation into the subscript of the anion. Mm -hmm. The SO4 is a two minus. I make the charge of the anion into the subscript for the cation. So now I know that my chemicals are balanced. Now I go through, when I balance a chemical equation, my rules are balance cations, balance anions, then hydrogen, then oxygen. I have two aluminums on the right, one on the left. How do I fix this, Monica? You just need to add two aluminums there. Two, okay. All right, I have one iron, one iron. That seems good. How mm -hmm. many sulfates do I have on the right? Three. So what do I have to put in front of this? Three, but then now that messes up your Irons, easy yeah, enough. but then you just add three more in there. That explains how I got those. Okay. Now, how I got the ions down here is I multiplied the coefficient times the subscript. Okay. Yeah, and then that's, that's what, so, so you can cross them out. Yes. Monica, okay. that's how I do it. Okay. If you can find a systematic approach that works. And it's not my method. I don't care that you're using my method. If this person on YouTube worked, then go for it. Okay? Okay. Who are you seeing okay. on YouTube, Monica? Man, I don't know her name. Um, May I make a suggestion? Uh-huh. The Organic Tutor. Okay. Do I get, you said Organic Tutor? The Organic Tutor. Do I get a recommendation from anybody else that's out there? I'm here at Crickets. Professor Warden. He's pretty good. Okay, Warden. thank you. I, I don't know if he has any videos on YouTube or not. I mean, he's an instructor. So. Yeah, I know, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, Monica, the other one is the Khan Academy, K-H-A-N. Those are my two, okay. two go-to people. All right, cool. ladies and gentlemen. You're going to be asked to go through. I'm not going to go through the video with you. The video is fairly precise, and he tells you pretty much the observations that you should be noting. Okay? There are basically five questions for each reaction. First reaction, first question is, did the reaction go? Okay, if you added a, a shiny aluminum metal to a blue solution of copper nitrate and you get a faded solution and a brown solid forming, did you have a reaction, ladies and gentlemen? So you're going to be looking at this video. He's going to describe what is happening as you're viewing it. And you're going to have to make a determination as to what you want to record for your observations, as well as 
whether you think a reaction went. Now, the next thing you're going to be asked is what are what is the neutral element? What is the cation? So if I have aluminum, what I'm doing is I'm adding aluminum metal to a solution of copper nitrate. The neutral metal would be my aluminum. The cation would be copper plus two. All right, the next question you're gonna get asked, what is more active and what is less active? So if this reaction proceeded, the aluminum ended up ionic, aluminum is more active than copper. And so how you would answer it in the report is yes, reaction went, my neutral metal was aluminum, my cation was Cu plus two, my aluminum was more active than my copper. And what happens? He will give you this reaction. And he will ask you the questions. Did the reaction go? What is the neutral element? What is the cation? What is more active? What is least active? And he's going to list them as multiple choice answers just in that form. You have to pick out the right answer. A, a wrong answer might have been yes, AL, CU plus two, CU comma AL. Are you understanding? And you got to be very careful when you're looking at these because some of them look very close to others. Okay. I'm going to end this and I am going to share screen again. No, I'm going to share screen again and I think this is where we're at. Sorry, I got to get something out of my way. Okay, course content. Is everybody seeing my screen? Yes. Just so you're not surprised and just so you can ask me questions. Okay. Which of the best following best reflects the mixing of MG and HCl? You order the answers, reaction, yes, no, neutral element, cation, more active, less active. And he gives you various choices in there. Okay. Each one of the reactions is gonna have something similar to that. Do I have any questions about what's going on with this? No, sir. It's not 127 questions again, is it? <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> wait till next week. No. <laughs> okay. Now, after you've gone through the uh, reactions with reference to the, exper the, the experiments above, what is the product of the following reaction equation? Now, guys, you have to be careful because some of the answers are going to be correct. You have to look at the subscripts very carefully to determine which one is the correct one. Same thing with all of them. If there is no reaction, just click on the no reaction button. Questions about this? All right. Do you remember when I was talking about when I went through that exercise regarding the activities? 
You're gonna have to look at all these reactions and do the analysis just like we did for uh, our activity series that I had on the PowerPoint. And you're gonna have to analyze all these reactions and you're gonna have to determine which one was the most active, which one was the least active. And of the other two elements, which one is more active? Then you're gonna to have to write an activity series. If you believe that zinc is the most active, then you are going to put a one for zinc. If you think that hydrogen is the least active, you're gonna put a four for that. Now, remember when I was talking about the calcium and the tin for the determination of which one is more active? You've got a choice of silver and copper. Guys, for some reason or other, this split it between the C and the U. This is copper, not carbon. Relative activity of silver and copper, which one of these will give you the correct answer. And if you have a choice, it's always better to make something that you, it's always better seeing a positive than seeing nothing happen. That's my hint for that one. Okay, you've got the observations of when lead nitrate and potassium iodide were mixed. You got to show me which one. Again, you got a blue gel-like solid, a blue powdery solid. Listen to what he's saying. The single ions on the reactive side, you're to list four of them. These have four. And guys, they are funky, and you got to be careful of them. Okay, something like K23 plus means that the ion is K2 with a charge of three plus on it. He's got a lot of choices here, guys. Next thing, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you about this, I don't believe. If you haven't been told in lecture, the sum of the coefficients means you take whatever number in the balanced chemical reaction, you take whatever number is in front of the compound. That is the coefficient. You add all of the coefficients together. That is what the sum of coefficients is. If there's no number in front of the compound, it's assumed to be one. You're going to do that for that first reaction. You're going to do the you're going to figure out what the formula for compound A and B are. It doesn't matter which order you put them in because you're going to pick two out of here. Again. Okay, so super dumb question I have to ask. So when you have a compound and let's say you have a four at the beginning on the, on, on the first element, okay, I know there's four. Let's say there's no subscripts, no subscripts but there's a four behind the compound, right? So for the four, first element- A four, no subscripts, four in front. Four in front, yeah. Okay. So, okay, I know there's four on the first element. Would I assume that there's also four on the second element? If there's no subscript, the subscript's assumed to be one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, like there's no sub, just for the sake of the question. If there's no subscript and there's a coefficient of four, then there are four of the cations, four of the anions. So then there would be eight in that example. And then that, there would, that would be, be eight, Monica, there would be eight ions. Four of those ions would be cations. Four of those ions would be anions. Okay, cool. Thank you. Just wanted to be super clear in my head. No problem. Okay. You're going to do the full ionic of this and give me the sum of the coefficients. Uh, you're going to do the net ionic equation. And you're going to give me the sum of the coefficients. 
and you're going to do the whole thing over again with your second reaction. Same exact questions. The last three questions. Okay. What he's asking you to do, he doesn't want you to put coefficients. He doesn't want you to balance this. All he wants you to do, you have lead nitrate and magnesium sulfate. Predict the products that are formed. He wants you to put, make sure that the subscripts are correct. Don't worry about the coefficients. Want you to make sure that the products are balanced, that they have the correct number of subscripts. And there are three of these kind of questions. Crap. Would you say that this one is the more difficult one and then it make it better from here? Because this is like my yucky point right now. Uh, Monica? I hate to tell you this. I hate to tell you this, but it builds. Okay. Historically, my second test is has historically been has my worst results. Mainly for a couple of reasons. One of which is that everybody gets overconfident from the first exam, and you don't put too much time into this, and there is a lot of memorization and there's a lot of work that goes into this. There's a lot of stuff you have to memorize and get in your heads for this exam. Material wise, the next exam is gonna be the hardest material to understand. But students, because they get scared from the second exam, generally the results are better for the third than the second. Fourth exam, and I don't, wanna, don't really wanna get myself overconfident, but the material is generally a lot easier to understand for the fourth exam. Just my general opinion, Monica. What I've yes, seen- Yes, you are correct. I was overconfident on that first exam. I did excellent and then I relaxed and here I am. It's chemistry. That's the insidious nature of chemistry. It builds. And if you don't have this foundation, uh, the only thing I can tell you, Monica, is those two things I gave you, those two sources, Organic Tutor and uh, Khan Academy. Uh, go in, type in, single replacement reactions, Khan Academy, Google it, or in YouTube, just get in there. There will be information, okay? And the Organic Tutor, I really like. Uh, first of all, he teaches kind of like from the same perspective that I do. That's one of the reasons why I like him. And the second, he's very slow and methodical and he has a monotone voice. So he's very boring, but he's slow and methodical. Guys, that's all I got for you. Jeff looks like he's ready to pass out. I was ready to go before the class even started. <laughs> Can understand that, Jeff. You look Ooh, like you pretty, pretty much you got it together, though. Yeah. Victoria, you got it together as well. So I'm about to pull a Maverick and go pass out. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I gotta go eat three year, three day old fish. <laughs> Isn't that like toxic by now? I would never eat three. I don't yeah, even eat it the next professor, you're oh, Can I use your reference? Go. Are you a nurse or something I can quote to my wife? Absolutely not. But I mean, I just from growing up, my mom would always be like, yeah, maybe the next day. And that's about it. <laughs> you know? I'm sorry. Somebody was asking me another question, guys. I'm making a comment. Yeah, I just had a question. So what were the answers for one through 33? Yes, no, <laughs> CO3, <laughs> calcium. Just keep on repeating that and see what score you get. 
No, oh, Professor, is there let's, a question? Let's do a little test, guys. Okay. <laughs> Hey, uh, I'll tell you what, you flip a coin on each one of those questions, Gabe. <laughs> and sometime next January, I'll go and grade it for you, okay? <laughs> okay. Wait, did we did we have a did we have an extra credit question for this lab? No. You okay. won't have one for this one. There will be one more extra credit assignment. And I, I gotta be honest with you, it's been a couple of years since I've taught this course. So uh, uh, I don't uh, I don't remember what I knew that the electrolyte was with the nomenclature. Professor, and, is um is this lab and the pre lab going to be due on the fifteenth? That that's the next time we meet, right? Yeah. I believe the answer to that is yes. Okay. I Just believe. Want to make sure. Believe. Okay. Uh, exit preview. Let me check on it for you, uh, Victoria. Okay. Single lab reports available until March 15th. Uh, I believe the next lab we're doing is moles, which I am sorry, guys. Those of you that are having a test this week on moles, I apologize, but the moles laboratory is going to be wasted on you because you all have already had your test. You're going to, it's, it's a, it's a good lab, but unfortunately it's after the fact. So, so can we go ahead and postpone the test till we do the lab? You have everything, guys that have had, had me, you have everything that you need to do this report. If you want to go ahead and do the mole lab before Thursday, as extra practice, go for it. There is no, there's just an end date, there's no start date. Or the pre-lab and if you want to go ahead and do it and save yourself some work later on, go for it. All right. Sounds good. Is the class done or are we still? Waiting? Yeah. All right. Wait, haven't I talked enough guys? It's what? Nine o'clock. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you it's nine o'clock already. Peace. Yeah. It's a three tequila night, guys. Oh, I'll join you. <laughs> Whose house and are we going to? Have a good <laughs> spring break, Professor. Enjoy your fish. <laughs> you three, you three Take days. care. Bye. Hey, hey, Professor, your mercury levels are going to go over the roof, man. You want to try some chicken maybe? Or... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Professor. Okay, okay. Take care, guys. <laughs> Monica, are you doing okay tomorrow or not? Hi, Monica. Can you Hi, hear me? Monica. Yes, I can hear you. Hey. How are you doing? You're doing okay with this? Yes and no. What I'm worried about is on module two, I misunderstood. Like I did really well on the exam, but then on module two, I misunderstood and I basically ended up getting a zero on the quiz by accident, by just okay. being an idiot. And that was because like, I didn't understand the whole, like I had to get an 80%. And then I thought I did the, anyway, the long story short, 
I messed up module two. I ended up getting a zero on that quiz. Okay, so then, does he drop one? He, yeah, he drops one. But then here's the second problem is so on the quiz for for this thing, which when you explained it, I'm 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 piecing it together now. So I feel better now to go take the exam. But the problem is that the quiz I took last night for module six, which is this. So this is module six for me. I, I also I just bombed it. So now I'm at two modules that I've bombed. And I don't know if that's going to put me in a situation, like a really just bad situation. Well, first of all, Monica, uh, what, what I, uh, this is going to be your second exam, right? This is going to be my second exam, yeah, okay. for module five and six. All right, my, my advice to you is to see what you do on this one, okay? Mm -hmm. See what you do on this one. And obviously, uh, if you don't mind my asking, what score did you get in the first exam? Oh, I did really well. I got a 96 on the exam. Okay. So I take it you're looking for an A out of this. No, I'm looking for a C and pass out of this. <laughs> I'm just looking then, to pass. Then, then wait until this exam happens before you okay. start to worry. Okay. 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 I really would. I, I really would do, obviously study and bust your butt to get a good grade on this exam. But I really think. I, I would have no problem. I have no problem. I have I have kids in in here that don't even know that C is carbon, Monica. I no, mean, I know more than that. I I, I, I literally speaking, uh, well, you heard some of them. Some of them, the answer you can hear some of the answers I get. Yeah, I don't know how they're capable. You know how they're passing because I'm like I just hope my professor. Bottom line. Sees bottom line is they're not. Bottom line I, is just, I just hope that because I have Musgrave for my lecture. I just hope that he will know that the, the, he has an 11 a.m. Zoom and there's no way I can make that because I, I'm at work. So I just watch the videos afterwards. So I just I just hope he knows that I am like I'm literally till midnight, like trying to, you know, bust my butt because I really need to pass this in order to graduate. So it's not like like I have a lot to lose is, is kind of what I'm trying to say. And remember, so, you have me as a reference as well, okay? Yeah, yeah, but I'm doing what I can. I mean, I'm not giving up. I'm going to the end and getting the best grades possible that I can, and then going from there, you know? And again, wait until after this exam, okay? Yeah. I, I will be honest that it generally is the worst scoring exam from my perspective. And again, that, that has a lot to do with people getting overconfident mm -hmm. and they guess, oh, this stuff is easy. And mm -hmm. they, they, get easy. they get involved in the stuff and, and they just don't get it. Yeah, and that's really what did happen, honestly, because he gave us two weeks and I wasted my first week. And then the second week is when I started like busting my butt. And then that's when I was like, oh, dang, I really should have, <laughs> I really should have looked at this last week because of course, that that second week, he does that on purpose. You know, if you do it correctly, then you'll have a way sure. higher chance to succeed. But yeah, you're right. I'm just, I'm still, I mean, I'm not going to quit. But I'll tell you that much. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't get overly, overly pessimistic either, okay. Monica. Okay. But really, when, when you explained it today, it really helped because it's it's hard when you don't have, like with you, with seeing you in lecture at night, that definitely makes a difference for me. Because even if I'm taking up people's time, which I don't really mind taking up people's time, I just like, I know it's my opportunity to ask. So I'm just gonna take it, you know? And it was, it's appreciated. I'd much okay. rather have this person like you. I mean, Monica, really? Do I have to sit there and threaten to take attendance for you guys to be here? Not with me. I know, but- <laughs> Like but, I, I am happy to be here. I mean, how many people's names can I call out with nobody responding? Yeah, I know. I, I mean, don't that's know. the only threat know. that I have is to say, yeah. okay, if you're not here. Let me take anyway, attendance. By the way, I'm sorry, this this conversation is being recorded. I don't care. No, I don't, I don't care. I, I apologize for that. I didn't I realize it was going to get this personal. I just wanted to make sure that you were you were doing okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. All right, find us kind. Okay. I will All see right. you next week then.
No, I okay, won't. Bye. I'll see you. Okay, bye, Professor. Thank bye. you. Bye.